What's up guys? Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Lumion tutorial for you. So in today's video I was going to show you how to take an interior model from SketchUp, bring it into Lumion, and create a rendering of your space. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is a model we talked about a little bit on my SketchUp channel yesterday, um, but basically what we're doing is we're visualizing a new flooring material inside of this space. And so what we want to do is we want to take this model, and we want to send it over into Lumion where we can render it. All right, and so what I usually recommend doing is I recommend starting by going over and opening up Lumion before you use the Live Sync extension, um, just so that you can make sure that you've loaded the proper template. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to open Lumion, all right, and so once Lumion pops up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file. So I'm gonna click on new. So the cool thing about Lumion is they've given you the option to use any of their templates that are in here, as well as just like a blank or a simple plane. So in this situation, um, depending on what you're trying to do, the forests are really good um, if you want a bunch of trees and stuff in the background, or you can also use the mountain range if you want more mountain ranges and more wide open spaces. So these can save you a lot of time when having to actually set up your uh, set up the 3d space that your object is going to go in in this case I'm going to use the mountain range um, if you don't want mountains then the forest is an excellent choice but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on mountain range what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring in the mountain range template and so once this brings in the mountain range template what we can do is we can go back into SketchUp and we can use the live sync extension in order to bring this in so we're gonna go back to our model real quick we're gonna use the live sync extension um, in order to take this model and move it into Lumion so all you need to do with Lumion running is just click on the button for start live sync and so what that's gonna do is that's gonna take your model and it's gonna drop it into Lumion. So you can see how right now inside of Lumion we now have um, our couch and our model and everything else in here. And uh, we can start working with this a little bit more. So there's a few things we need to fix in here. Before we do this, I do recommend that you go back into SketchUp and you turn off camera synchronization because I found that negatively or that that has negatively affected my performance in the past. So the first thing you're going to notice when you look at your model um, over here is that you've got grass inside of your model, right? So if I fly around and I look in here, we've got grass going through our floor. There's a couple things I usually do when I bring a model in. The first is I move it up a little bit. So I don't move it up a ton, but just a little bit so that any ground or any terrain isn't showing through my model. The other thing I do is I go into my landscape settings and I paint this out with something that doesn't have grass. It doesn't really matter what it is because it won't show through your floor plane because we're above that plane. But I'm just gonna go in and I'm just gonna use the paint tool in order to paint something else on the ground in here so that I don't have grass showing through. And so for now, you can just paint this out fairly quickly. And then if you need to add something back in later, like if you need to have grass right outside your window, you can get that. But for now, you can see how what that allowed me to do is that allowed me to paint out the grass inside of this space. All right, so this is a good place to start. And the first thing I'm noticing is this furniture over here doesn't really look good inside of my rendering. So we need to come in here and we need to get rid of that and we're going to replace it with uh, we're going to replace it with Lumion furniture. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into SketchUp and remember that we've got our live sync running. Well, what that means is that means I can come in here and right click on one of these. So if I right click on my furniture group, for example, and click on hide, that's going to be hidden inside of my SketchUp model. But since live sync is running, if I go over and look in here, you can see how Lumion also updated as well. So this is a really quick, easy way to make changes inside of SketchUp that also occur inside of Lumion. And so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add some furniture. I'm going to do that really quickly. Um, I'll probably just flash the screen off and just drop these in here real quick, um, just because this video isn't really about adding furniture. But I'm going to go into the object library, and I'm just going to place some furniture inside of this space. All right, so now we have our coffee table in here. And so there's a couple different things we need to do to create our rendering. So the first thing is, if we go in here and we take a look at our photo mode right now, you can see this actually looks pretty good right out of the box. This is actually one of my favorite things about Lumion. So you just don't have to make that many changes for your renderings to look pretty good. Um, but there are a few things that we're gonna change. So the first is we're gonna mess around with our settings um, with our materials. So I'm gonna add a material to the walls, probably to the ceilings as well. And 
then we also need to mess around with the material for our wood on our floor. So in order to do that, we're gonna go back into build mode and we're just gonna click on the button for materials right here. And so the material editor will either allow you to add a material um, based on the materials that were applied to a model inside of SketchUp. Um, so for example, these were all the default materials. So right now if I change this, it's going to apply a new material to all of these. You can also click on this material right here and you can adjust the settings for that material. So let's do that first. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this material and then we're going to go over to the option for standard. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this to set this up as a standard material. Notice how as soon as I did this, um, what this did is this made this like super glossy, right? Like way too glossy. And the reason for that is because we don't have any map data associated with this. And so what this does is this just puts everything in as kind of an average. And so we're just going to adjust some of these settings to make this look a bit more realistic. So first of all, I'm going to bring the gloss like way further down. You can leave a little bit of gloss in there, um, but you don't need a ton because if you make it super glossy, it's going to look more like a, like a reflective stone or something like that. So we're going to drag the gloss down to maybe like 0.1 for right now. We're also going to turn the reflectivity down. So we want it to be a little bit reflective, like we want it to reflect light because um, that's going to make it look more realistic, but we don't want it to be so reflective that it feels like a mirror. So we're going to turn our reflectivity down to maybe like, we'll call it 0.5 for right now. And then for relief, um, a lot of the time what you would see here is you would see a normal map. But because this is just an image that we pulled in off of a home improvement website, um, it doesn't have any maps associated with it. So there's really two ways to go about this. The first is you could use a program like Materialize in order to generate maps based on this material image. And if you guys are interested, I can make a video about how to do that. But I don't really want to do that for this because this is more of a quick visualization. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the button for create normal map from color map. So what that's going to do is that's going to use this image file in order to create our normal map. And it's not going to be super detailed, but it's going to be detailed enough that this will make this look a bit more realistic. And so you can adjust the relief a little bit. Um, it's not going to be a huge change one way or the other. So I'm just going to leave it at one for right now. So the other thing I want to do is I want to apply a plaster material to my walls with a color associated with it. So to do that, I'm just going to click on my walls right here, and I'm just going to go into my indoor settings, and I'm going to look under the plaster settings for a material that's kind of close to what I'm looking for. So notice how I can go in and I can make adjustments to this just by clicking on it. Um, in order to kind of take a look at these. You can see how a lot of these are like super, super textured. And uh, I don't necessarily want them to be that strongly textured. So I don't want this to look like the basement of a prison or something like that. But I do want there to be a little bit of texture in here. So possibly, I think what I want to do is I want to use one of these polygon materials with a displacement map associated with it. Because those materials with the displacement map are going to look rougher and more realistic. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go with this one for right now. And what I want to do is I want to double click on it so that I can adjust the colorization a little bit. So the way that we can do that is I want this to be more of like a tan color than the color that it is right now. So what we can do is we can drag this up with the colorization option, then we can click on this button right here in order to choose a color. And in this situation, notice how this is all black. Well, you just need to drag this brightness up a little bit right here. And then you can kind of drag this in and you can select a color. So for me, I want this to be just having like a tint of yellow in it. So I don't want it to be super yellow. I may even go more in the like reddish direction, but I don't want it to be bright white like this either. So maybe something like this. And then the other thing you can do if you want to is you can click and drag this button right here to adjust the color scale or the uh, map scale. So what that's going to do is if you drag this way up, you're going to notice that you're getting like super big, um, you're getting super big um, plaster pieces in here and you don't necessarily want that, but you can use this to adjust how textured these walls are. So. And it's kind of subtle. You need to be a little bit careful with the way that you're doing this. I'm going to bring this down to like a 0.8. 
And so then I'm gonna click on the button to save changes. Let's go ahead and go back into photo mode and see what our image is going to look like. So right here, this is a little bit better. Um, it's got kind of this more yellow color in here. And so if I click in here, remember that we have the option now to preview what our rendering is going to look like. And so our rendering looks pretty good. Um, what we can do if we want to is we can adjust our focal length so that this room doesn't look like it's a big long big long narrow room but just note that when you do that you have to kind of you kind of have to be careful with this because you want to make sure that you get enough in here that your image doesn't feel super tight but I think for right now this looks okay we may come back and adjust this down just a little bit but notice how this looks like a really long room if we make the focal length really low so we're gonna put this at something like 30 for right now then what I want to do is I just want to bring in a style so the styles in here are really great for building on top of so for example um, I want to bring in either the realistic style or the interior style so we can try the interior style and see what this looks like so I actually think the interior style does a really great job in here but notice what this does is this actually brings in um, a lot of different effects that are kind of preset so these effects are preset and what that means is that means that we don't have to make a whole bunch of changes um, and what we can do is we can kind of make adjustments to the ones that are really gonna really move the needle on the way our image is going to look so in this situation for example the real skies is one one example of this so the real sky depending on how I adjust this um, is going to affect the brightness of my scene and also kind of where the sunlight is coming through and this is another area where this live preview is really great because um, I can actually click in here and this will give me like a preview image of what this rendering is going to look like so I can make a change I can click in here in order to see what the space is going to look like um, before I do my actual rendering and so it doesn't really matter in this situation what you pick just pick something that you like so if you want something with a little bit more Sun you might want to think about going with um, you might want to think about going with something with a different sun location so this one for example I can set this up so I get more sun coming through the windows so what that means is that means this is going to be a brighter scene and if you wanted to you could add an artificial light in here in order to brighten your scene up even more I don't think I even want to go to that level of detail at this point but the other thing that I usually look at is I look at the color correction because the color correction allows me to adjust the feel of my scene right so if I turn my color temperature down what that's gonna do is that's going to make this feel um, this is gonna make my color temperature a little cooler and the lights gonna be a little more blue or a little bit more um, a little bit more white so on the other hand if I turn my color temperature up it's gonna give me a brighter or a warmer color image in here so it's gonna be more yellow and orange and so you can kind of play around with this to just kind of adjust the feel that you're gonna get inside of your scene so and if you wanted to you can even store this camera with these settings so I could click right here in order to store this view then we could add another set of presets in a second view so we could kind of test this to see which look that we like so I could create a second one here let's say for this one we wanted to go with the realistic style instead of the interior style and then for this one let's say that we wanted our temperature to be a little cooler we could do this um, using the temperature and one thing that might be interesting in here is you could turn this color temperature down and then add your artificial light if you wanted to do that so you can create different previews um, and other different things in here using these settings so the other thing that's kind of cool is you can also do an edit and you can copy those effects so what that means is that means that let's say I created another camera location over here that gave me a different view of my space maybe one over here maybe with a bit wider focal length but what I could do is I could store the camera right here and then I could do an edit and I could paste those effects on here so that I would have the exact same effects in this view that I had in my first view so the other thing we might want to think about doing is we might want to think about adding some trees outside of our window so if we were to go back into build mode we could just dump some trees in here really quick in order to add just a little bit of realism so you don't have to be too complex with this you can just go into place mode just find some trees that kind of align with where you're at so in this case maybe 
like some Alaskan cedars or something like that. And then if we go back and look at these again, you can see how we've got the trees out here and they're affecting the way the light is in here. So you can use this to kind of add some realism really quickly. But once you have this set kind of the way that you want it to be, and you can go through and you can adjust all of these a little bit if you want to, but then we're just gonna render our image. And so the way that we're gonna do that one other thing you might want to think about doing is adding some ref reflection planes. So if we go in here, we can add reflection planes. This is going to tell Lumion where to calculate reflections inside of our model. Note that the more reflection planes that you add, um, the longer your rendering is going to take. But I'm going to go ahead and hit the checkbox here. And so now what this is going to do is this is actually going to calculate light bouncing back off of these windows. But once, once we've got this set kind of the way that we want, we can just click in the button here to render photos. So when we render our photo, you can set the size of your photo that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to desktop. And we'll go ahead and we'll just call this interior render and click on save. So when we click on save, that's gonna go through and that's gonna render out our image. And notice how this image is much more detailed. So you can see how you're getting more reflections off of your light. Your flooring material looks really good as well. So for very little work in this situation, we were able to get a really good looking rendering inside of Lumion. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Would you like to see more tutorials like this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.